Hi there, so I'm Jason, I'm the Executive Director of Leet UK and behind me, as you can see there, we have the Houses of Parliament. Four years ago, Leet UK Law Enforcement Action Partnership launched in that very building where we detailed the whole timeline of drug laws. So we had Patrick Hennessy, who is a former military officer in Afghanistan, he was tasked with policing the poppy fields there. And that, believe it or not, trickles all the way down to street level here. So I'm in the middle of Westminster getting a few funny looks from people. And this affects every single one of these. Everyone that's looking at me with a little bit of a grin, this affects them. So whether it's the highest rate of drug deaths of all time, up in Scotland, here in England and Wales, the numbers are just increasing. We've also got a practice called County Lions, whereby children as young as 10 or 11 are being recruited by drug gangs that are sending them from the cities into small towns, like seaside towns, into country towns to do the drug running putting those lives at danger and also their prospects as well because if a child gets a drug conviction or is in the social services that's going to impact their future lives and their job prospects so again if they're being affected that affects every single one of us once more. We've also got drug testing at festivals and night spots which we can do we can do that with with some degree of coalition between services and thankfully people like the loop are doing that and these are conversations we need to have as well. But when we launched in this parliament in four years ago, it was, a, it was a different scene. It was just around about the time we started having the Brexit conversation. Of course, Brexit has now dominated the news. But we've taken our eye off a lot of different legislation because of this. Now, what we need to do is have the bigger conversation. And thankfully, we're teaming up with my POV online and we're gonna give you some introductions to some of our current members, some of our new members, such as Lord Falconer. We've got a friend in Peter Blexley who was there in Parliament with us four years ago. We've got Suzanne Sharkey, who is just an incredible person, a personal friend, her story is amazing. Nick Castle, a former undercover officer who again has just got the most incredible story. Existing people you might know, like Neil Woods, who's a former undercover officer, again a personal friend, written two incredible books on the drug wars and what the drug laws do on the street level. And I'm going to be speaking to you as well. I'm going to be giving you some degree of uh, rambling content of why we need to sort these drug laws out and why every one of us needs to be part of this conversation. Now, over time, we're going to timeline what our drug laws do. We're going to make sure that we have the conversation of what goes on in production countries like Afghanistan, Colombia, all the way down to street level here in London, here in where you live. There are so many ways in that, that route takes its shape and it does affect every single one of us so if you are someone that's related to someone that may have an addiction let's get them some help and clemency and understanding let's not judge them let's not have a position where we're going with punitive policy first and foremost because that's what our drug laws do it prevents people from seeking help because they're afraid to it's stigmatized Let's make sure that our children are safe. If they're attending a festival or a club, let's get their drugs test. Most of us won't want our children taking drugs, but if they do, what is the safest way they can do it? What's the best advice they can have? Let's have the conversation of how children are involved in drug gangs and how can we get them away? What prospects can we give them where that allure of cash crop no longer has the allure? How can we make sure that organized crime, which is bigger than ever, has got more profit than ever, has got more people involved in those chains of industry and never how can we make sure that we stunt that how can we cripple that because at the moment we're not touching it and even they admit that even the politicians who are making this current legislation or are holding the current legislation even they admit that they know that things aren't working and yet they're not coming up with any other solutions other than the usual media rhetoric that may look good for a headline but doesn't do anything in practice so my POV and the UK are going to team up we're going to give you that timeline. We're going to comprehensively tell you where each one of these li links in the chain forms up to give us this picture and what can we do about it. And in the process, we're going to introduce you to some very interesting characters, the ones that have been out there, the ones that have been policing this, the ones that have been chief constable level, the ones that have been head of uh, police federations that have had this big conversation as well. There's a lot we can do to make sure that we keep this conversation going. So thank you very much for joining us and please, please do be part of this conversation because drug laws aren't solving themselves, we need to do this.